And today's weather was all about variety. Our core rep in Hagen found just about every kind of precipitation there was. We got a little bit of rain. Yeah, we got some hail. We got some grapple. Grapple is, is like hail, but it's, it's softer. Uh, learned that today. <laughs> yeah, there was some snow in there to round everything out. Uh, welcome in here. I'm Alexandra Lewis with Kyle Clark, and we're going to have Chris Bianchi join us here in just a moment with your weather forecast. It seems like it's still snowing up in the mountains. Is that right, Chris? Yeah, uh, they just shut down Vail Pass. Uh there because of what you just saw a second ago, all that heavy snow accumulating up there in the high country. And this is certainly one of those days where it's just weathering uh, for us here with rain, with snow, with grapple, with you name it, we're getting it right now. But this will end for most of us by about midnight, drier tomorrow and the rest of the week much warmer. But in the meantime, still looking at some of that active weather for us. Uh, HD up radar because it, we're, we're up into the mountains. Remember, radar beams travel up, so they can't pick up on everything that's going on in the middle of the mountains. So that's why you're seeing kind of what looks like a black hole there in the middle. Trust me, it's snowing up there at Vail Pass. We just showed you a second ago. Close look in, though, here at the Denver area. We're seeing some of that rain, a little kind of heavier pocket of rain out by Aurora, uh, just maybe on the east side here of the metro area. And that's where we're seeing some, again, of that steadier, heavier rain uh, into the foothills and really above 6,000 feet. I know Golden, Arvada, Morrison seeing some of that wet, slushy snow right now. That's got maybe another two, three hours or so to go before this really shuts on down. Heaviest of the snow will be for us on the Palmer Divide, above 6,000 feet. So kind of think Castle Rock, Larkspur Monument. That's where you're going to be looking at a couple inches of slushy accumulation, mostly on grassy and colder surfaces. So for tonight, we'll drop back into the upper 20s for us. Rain snow mix ends early tomorrow up into the upper 50s. But later on this week, our first 70 degree day of the year, very likely for us. I'll have details on that coming up. Thank you, Chris. The three teenagers accused of killing a 20 year old woman by throwing a rock through her car window pleaded not guilty today. It's been almost a year since Alexa Bartel was killed while driving in Jefferson County. Nine News Crime and Justice reporter Kelly Rinke explains those new charges against one of the defendants. Joseph Koenig is now facing four more counts for throwing rocks at two additional victims. Prosecutors say these new incidents happened months before Alexa Bartel was killed. Um, the complaints have been filed electronically in each separate matter. One by one, they gave the same reply. Mr. Koenig enters not guilty pleas to count. A not guilty plea from the three 19 year olds almost a year after Jefferson County deputies say they threw landscaping rocks at people who were driving. One of those rocks slammed into Alexa Bartel's car. It really doesn't matter on the evidence we've heard who threw the rock, except it may be a, a factor in decisions to offer a plea bargain to someone who did not. Nine News legal expert Scott Robinson says these not guilty pleas don't rule out plea bargains later on. Joseph Koenig, Zachary Kwok, and Nicholas Karolchik are charged with first degree murder for Bartel's death. They also face attempted murder charges for throwing rocks at six other drivers that night. It's certainly possible that prosecutors will try and work out the deal with one or two of the individuals if they've decided to focus on one of the young men. Koenig is facing additional charges unlike the others. He's now facing four more felonies after prosecutors say he threw rocks at two other victims months before Bartel was killed. They believe that the individual intended to cause death. The fact that they did not is why it's attempted first degree murder. The more incidents that they were involved in, the less likely it was that it was just simply a spur of the moment. Deputies say the three teenagers drove around Jefferson County that night with a pile of landscaping rocks. Monday, they appeared to not even look at one another. Prosecutors said Carol Chick told investigators last year that he and Koenig were involved in 10 rock throwing incidents between February and April. Deputies said in that same interview, Carol Chick told investigators those prior incidents did not involve moving cars. That first trial is set for June. Kelly Rinke, Nine News. A similar incident was reported recently. A woman in northern Colorado says somebody threw something at her windshield last week. It allegedly happened along Highway 60, just east of Johnstown, Thursday night. It's still Gearock says she doesn't know what hit the car, but it was big enough to shatter the windshield. I wish I did. I wish I did know the description of the car, even like the plates or anything to be able to give to the cops because it makes me feel like I was useless at that point. But at that point, it's so dark, like I couldn't make out anything and even with the impact of just the loud sound, I just, it was very, very overwhelming. 
Johnstown police are investigating. Gurak says she shared her story on a neighborhood Facebook page, and some other people said the same thing had happened to them that night. The Weld County Sheriff's Office is investigating one of those cases. Driver says a bag of slime and rocks hit their car also on Highway 60 Thursday night. Aurora police are still looking for the driver who hit a six year old girl after she stepped off of an RTD bus Friday. It happened in a neighborhood just west of Buckley Space Force Base. Police say Navy King started to cross the street when a pickup truck hit her. The driver didn't stop. Navy is out of the hospital tonight, but she is covered in road rash and bandages. Whoever's out there, you hit a child and you you kept going. We are her protectors. We're supposed to be there for her. I love that they all love me and I love that they all take care of me. Police say they don't have a lot to go on. They just know the driver was in a dark Colorado truck with tinted windows. Navy's family is now offering a $5,000 reward for any information that leads to an arrest. A doctor in Glenwood Springs has been arrested, accused of unlawful sexual contact. Mark Young owned and operated a ketamine therapy clinic. Colorado Medical Board documentation shows that Young's medical license was suspended last year after he was accused of inappropriately touching a patient while under the influence. Now, online court records show a felony case against him, four charges of sexual contact. He's in custody, bond set at $10,000. Some of the most active litigators in Colorado are hospital systems. And for years, those hospital systems have figured out a good way to keep their courtroom efforts against patients hidden from the public. Nine News investigative reporter Chris Vanderveen has spent months looking into one provider in particular, and now a renewed effort to try and better understand just who is suing who. We do not want to end up in court. Our goal is to work with patients. For years, the state's largest and one of its best known medical systems has done something that to date has yet to appear in any of its glossy ads. Suing patients never has made for good PR. Do you know how many you sued last year? Uh, I don't have an exact number. To the credit of UC Health's chief legal officer, we did eventually get that number, which last month we reported. We also reported this. In five years, UC Health sued more than 15,000 patients. I was shocked by your story. I was shocked at the volume of the cases. State Senator Sonia Hawkins lewis saw our story. So did State Senator Lisa Cutter. That was a great story, and I really appreciate the reporting. 15,000 lawsuits in five years. Eight patients a day, roughly. What do you think? I think that's shocking, and I think that's, that's not how it should be. What also got their attention? What we also uncovered, UC Health has sued patients not under its name, but under the name of one of its various debt collectors, a practice that has allowed it to largely escape public scrutiny. What I can um, believe could be the case is the hospitals would find it a lot easier if their name is not going into the court system every single day. Here's how it's done. Let's say Hospital X wants to sue Jane and John Doe for an unpaid medical bill, but doesn't want the public to know how often it sues patients like the Doe's. So it sues them under a name of a debt collector. And poof, no way to publicly link Hospital X to the litigation. This is the normal course. This is the way things work with these vendors, and it's how we do it. How we do it, says UC Health. So last year, Senators Cutter and Hawkins Lewis tried to stop how UC Health and other hospitals do it. Senate Bill 93. Tell us about your bill. If you want to sue someone for an unpaid medical bill. This type of transparency enables consumers to identify the debt. The bill said you need to sue under your own name. This bill will begin to untangle the complicated web of medical debt. Only problem. My name is Brett Riley. I am the Madam Madam Chair. My name is Tom Romola. Debt collectors. Thank you, Senator. I'm Alan Greenberg. I'm under My name is Captain O'Brien. Didn't seem to like the idea. Members of this committee to consider amending this legislation. We have a, a, an amendment so out I'm here. here to advocate for the amending this legislation. In the end, I move amendment L002. Their words worked. Legislators amended the bill, which gutted the requirement. It's really important that consumers know who is suing them. Colorado Attorney General Phil Weiser says. It's time to try again. Who is this debt collector? What's the underlying debt? You, as a consumer, you should know. What debt are they talking about and what rights do you have? House Bill 1380 says a debt collector can sue under the debt collector's name only if the debt collector owns the debt. I believe there's 
time for us to do something about that this session. Should it pass, hospitals like UC Health would be forced to either sell their debt or sue under their own name. The latter would once again make their lawsuits open to public inspection. Chris Vanderveen, Nine News. That new piece of legislation gets its first committee hearing in about a week and a half. UC Health insists that it is not an outlier when it comes to the number of lawsuits filed, but due to the issues that Chris has identified, it's nearly impossible to verify that claim using the state's court system. We want to know about the issues that you are running into with your medical bills. Email Chris and our team at showusyourbills at 9news.com. That email address again is showusyourbills at 9news.com. The last survivor of the attack on the USS Arizona in Pearl Harbor has died. Luke Hunter's daughter says he passed away today at his home in California. Conter spent most of his childhood here in Colorado, where he enlisted in the Navy after school. In his autobiography, Lou said that he attended high school in Wheat Ridge. Conter was a quartermaster on the Arizona. When Japanese planes bombed the naval base in Hawaii, he was just 20 years old. More than 2,400 people died. Conter joined other survivors in tending to the wounded. He would later fly 200 combat missions during World War II. Lou Conter was 102 years old.